Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Bill Indiana. Today I'm going to do a partial playthrough and review of a new game by Ravensburger, one that I've been looking forward to. The Princess Bride Adventure Board Game. Are you ready for some fencing, fighting, giants, monsters, escapes, true love, and miracles? Well, let's get it to the table. Uh -oh. Here on the table I have the Princess Bride Adventure book game set up for a game to show you a partial playthrough. I'm just going to play through the first chapter, but let me give you an overview of the game first. And if you're curious to see a close-up of more of these different components, feel free to check out my unboxing video that I posted a few days ago. So in this game, it's a game for one to four players, and it's a cooperative game where you're trying to complete six different stories or chapters in this book. So just like the movie, for those of you that have seen the movie, which is probably most of you, um, just like the movie, the, it, the game is about getting through a storybook and surviving the different activities, adventures, perils that uh, confront our heroes. And so in the game, you're going to be going through one chapter at a time and trying to survive each one. And if you survive the first one, you move to the next and the next and the next. And you basically have one chance to fail a chapter uh, and then if you do fail that chapter, you can try that chapter again, set it up and try again, and eventually, hopefully, work your way through all six chapters. So um, what I have here set up is I've got the player aid here. Uh, just tells you what you can do during each step, and I'll walk you through that as we demonstrate the partial playthrough. I've got the plot deck here, which is sort of a timer for the chapter. You have to accomplish the challenges of the chapter before the plot timer runs out. <clears throat> We have different miniatures for each of the characters, and you don't necessarily use every miniature for every chapter. In this first chapter, we're just going to use Buttercup and Wesley, the Dread Pirate Roberts, before he's the, Robert, the pirate. Uh, but there are the other miniatures, and there are a number of different tokens. Uh, these tokens we won't use in this chapter, but they'll come up in different chapters in the future. Then we have the story deck, and in the story deck we have different cards of courage and adventure and intrigue and love. Um, and we use those cards to satisfy the requirements of the various challenges and also to accomplish different actions within the game. This is the replay counter, so if we ever do get stalled, so if we, if for some reason we break the rule of a particular chapter or the plot timer runs out, uh, our story is interrupted by the impatient grandson and we have to flip this over and that means we're down to only one try left. Um, and so we get one chance basically to fail a chapter in the six chapters. On every chapter, there's a list of challenges along this side. And then we use these little tokens and there are more in the box uh, in case there are more challenges on, uh, because there are more challenges on some of the other uh, chapters. But you just put these on each challenge as you complete them. And then these are the special um, feature cards. And so these special action cards give you um, a unique ability that you can capitalize on during the play of the game. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the setup. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the rule book um, and read through some of the challenges and, and features here of chapter one. So the rule book is actually very brief. We see fencing, fighting, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love and miracles. Um, and it has just the different components. And then it has the basic setup of how you'll put the board out and shuffling all the decks and organizing all the decks of cards. Uh, it has the overview and then an explanation about how you use the story cards and complete the challenges. And then it talks about those special cards that I mentioned. Um, and then it talks about the miracles, which are little star tokens I'll show you, and how you complete the chapters and what happens if the story gets interrupted by the grandson. And you end the game basically by accomplishing all six chapters successfully and then two of prevails. Um, so hopefully you understood that. True love prevails and that's how you win the game. What I like about this, though, is how every chapter is unique. It's kind of like six mini games, and I'll come back to this more in my review at the end, but um, each chapter has its own unique setup features. So what I want to read to you here is basically, and I wouldn't normally do this, but I think it's really creative the way they've organized it. I'm just going to read this little quick setup for chapter one. Uh, first, it says for all chapters. At the start of each chapter, shuffle the story deck, which is this deck, then deal four story cards to each player. So I'll deal those out here in a second. Shuffle the plot deck and place it next to the book. So here's the plot deck, like I mentioned. Then set up the chapter according to the instructions below before reading through the chapter rules and challenges. So the first chapter is as you wish. 
Follow the instructions for all chapters. See for all chapters. We just read that. Number one, or sorry, number two, uh, place Wesley in the barn and Buttercup in the farmhouse. So we've got Wesley here in the barn and Buttercup in the farmhouse. Place one chore counter on the wood, horse, and well spaces. So we got horse, well, and wood. We got uh, pieces of wood. These are the chore counters on the uh, those three spaces. Place the remaining chore counters on the list of chores, which is down here. Place a miracle counter on the star space, which we've done here. Read through the rules and challenges for the chapter. So we'll do that. Here are the rules over here, and here are the challenges. Whoever most recently completed a chore goes first. <laughs> uh, and so I'm just going to kind of play this as a one-player game uh, to show you how you can play it solo. Uh, but we played through it as a couple, my wife and I, and really enjoyed that interaction and also just loved the nostalgia. But I'm getting ahead of the review. Let me get back to the gameplay. So over here we see Chapter 1, As You Wish, The Story So Far. Buttercup enjoys nothing more than tormenting the farm boy whose only reply is, as you wish. The chapter rules. Chores. During the storytelling phase, the active player may discard a card to move a chore counter in Wesley's space to the list of chores. So you're going to be using these story cards, and I'll go ahead and take my four so I don't forget to do that. So there's my four story cards. Uh, you'll be using those story cards as you move the players to take these chores off of the board and put them on the list of chores here. The chapter is interrupted if there are no more chore counters remaining in the list of chores when you would need to place a chore on the map. So as the plot progresses, we're going to have to place chores back onto the map, and if we run out of the, the chore symbols or emblems tokens from this list, the story gets interrupted and we flip this card. All right, um, if we look at the plot table, so these plot cards, let's move this out of the way. Um, this plot list if we turn over a card that is 1 through 15, it says, Fuck boy, uh, place a chore counter from the list of chores on the space with the same number as the revealed plot card. For example, if you drew plot card 14, place the chore counter on space 14. So as we turn over these plot cards, we're going to have to put the chore tokens onto the board. If I turn over a plot card that is number 16 through 20, fetch me that pitcher. Move Buttercup to Wesley's space, then draw and resolve another plot card. Sometimes it's helpful when Buttercup moves to the same space as Wesley. Sometimes it's not so helpful. But that's what you do. You follow those directions for the plot progression. Over here on the challenges, the first challenge is as you wish. The requirements. There must be two or fewer chore counters on the map. So we start with three on the map and three in the list. We need to get it down to two or fewer on the map. Wesley and Buttercup must be in the same space. So those are our two requirements to satisfy this first challenge. The reward when we accomplish that is that we would draw one card from the special deck. That's these. Then there's a quote. That day she was amazed to discover that when he was saying, as you wish, what he meant was, I love you. Then the second challenge is true love. This requires that Wesley and Buttercup must be in the barn. So they have to get them together and get them into the barn. And then the reward is we would draw another special deck card. The quote, and even more amazing, was the day she realized she truly loved him back. And then the final challenge is seek fortune. Requirement. Buttercup must be in the barn and Wesley on the two fortune space, which is down here. You must have completed all the other challenges, so both as you wish and true love. And the reward? You complete this chapter and we move on to the next chapter. And the quote, hear this now, I will always come for you. Now on the side of these challenges, you also see these emblems. There's a heart here for love, and this has two hearts and then a courage, um, and then this has two adventures and a courage symbol. So not only do we have to get these requirements in terms of getting the characters in the right spot and um, accomplishing the tasks at hand, we also have to turn in these cards from our story cards. And I've turned over cards. I've got a love card, an adventure card, a revenge card, and another revenge card. And so each time I take a turn, I'm going to follow the steps. First, I'm going to move. I'm going to move a single character, zero, one, or two spaces, or I can move two characters, one space. Then I go to the storytelling phase, and I can do these in any order, the storytelling steps. I can discard any number of these cards and move one character, one space per discarded card. I can complete the challenges by meeting the requirements and discarding those cards. I can play special cards, and I don't have any to begin with, but eventually I'll accumulate special cards. I can trade a single card with another player. And since I'm playing this solo, you won't see that in action, but that's actually a really helpful thing. You can only do that trade one time per turn. You can use a miracle to draw three cards from the story deck or one card from the special deck. And once you pass through or stop at this space that has the miracle token, you pick it up 
and you can use it during this gameplay, or you can actually keep it and carry it on to the next chapter if you wish. The third step is draw. You're going to draw two cards from the story deck and add them to your hand. And then the fourth deck or fourth step is plot. You're going to discard the top card from the plot deck and follow its instructions according to what the rules say here. And then the fifth step is discard. If you have more than six cards in your hand, you discard down to six. And so this nice little player aid gives you all of those steps to follow each turn. So I've got my cards. I've got the board set up. I've got Wesley and Buttercup where they need to be. Well, let's go ahead and jump in. So first I need to move. Well, I'm going to see if I can accomplish some of this ta these tasks here. So I'm going to go uh, one, two. And when I get there, I'm going to discard a revenge card. So I'll put my discard pile here to put this chore back over here. Now I know I want to have love, love, and courage for these two challenges. And so I'm going to keep this love card on hand. Um, but I'm, I could use the adventure or revenge cards to continue to move him. And I know that I eventually do want to clear off more um, of the, the wood tokens. And I also want to get Wesley and Buttercup together because for this one, they need to, uh, they need to be on the same space. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and why not? I'm just going to go ahead and discard both of these and move Wesley closer to Buttercup. Now, I, I don't have another card to take uh, that wood away, so I'm going to stop right there, and that's the end of my turn. Maybe a little bit risky discarding down to or using cards down to only one left, um, but we'll see. So I draw two cards, and I drew a Courage and an Intrigue, so that's good. I'm going to need Courage down here, an Intrigue I can use for moving. Now, one thing that's unique about this game, as opposed to other cooperative games, is typically like in a pandemic-style game, each player has a certain character. But in this game, if we were playing multiple players, it's not me that controls Wesley or me that controls Buttercup. I can control any character that's on the board, and so can every other player I'm playing with. It's a really unique feature about this game. So now it's still, now it's, uh, I, I've completed my turn. I've done my move, my storytelling. I've played cards to move the characters and, and accomplish aspects of the story. I've drawn my cards. Now it's time to carry out the plot. So the first plot card is number 13, and there's a quote here. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Sit down. The grandson speaking to the grandfather during the story reading. And it's a 13. So again, that's 1 to 15 here. It says place a chore counter from the list of chores on the space with the same number. So we're going to put one of these on space 13, so back at the barn. Not too concerning because eventually i got to get them both back to the barn, and so we can hopefully clear that out later. But that does put a third token back on the board. And as you remember, the requirements in this first challenge are Wesley and Buttercup have to be together, and there can be two, must be two or fewer chore tokens on the, on the board. All right, so that was the end. And I don't have to discard. I only have three cards, so I'm far under my six limit. And then it's the next turn. So in this turn, I'm going to start with my move action. And I'm going to go uh, one, two, and get to this wood pile here with Buttercup. And I'm going to discard Intrigue to get rid of that chore. And I've got Love and Courage. Those are pretty good cards, so I think I'm going to stop right there. Um, Wesley could get rid of that wood next time, and hopefully I can get them on the same space uh, so that they can accomplish the challenge here pretty soon. Uh, so I'll stop there for my storytelling act. Now I'm going to draw two cards. One, two. I drew Revenge and Intrigue. And then the plot card gets played. This time the plot says number nine, and the grandfather says, yes, you're very smart. Shut up. <laughs> uh, and then it says it's number nine, so we put a chore onto space number nine, which is, where is number nine? I'm missing it here. Oh, right down here with the wish, the miracle. All right, good. That's, that's a good place. We can accomplish both feats, get rid of a wood and gather that miracle. All right, so that's the end of the plot. I only have four cards, so no need to discard. And now I move on to the next turn. So I'm going to move. So uh, with Wesley being here at the well, I can get, I'm can i going to use a revenge card. Because remember, I can do the storytelling in any order. Uh, actually, though, I do, th I do have to move first. Sorry. I do have to move first. So um, let's go ahead and move her down here. So one, two. She's going to pick up that miracle. Um, and... Now I'm going to do my storytelling, so I'm going to discard the Revenge so that she can discard this wood, and then I'm going to discard the Intrigue so that Wesley can discard this wood or put it back in the list of chores. Uh, so now I just need to get them together. Uh, but I want to keep these Love and Courage cards for now still, so 
I do have a Miracle Token, and recall the Miracle Token allows me to either draw one special feature card or three of the story cards. Um, but I'm going to keep these cards so I'm done with my storytelling. I draw two cards, and I got another love and another courage, which is great because I need three loves in this section. I need courage in both of these, so those are great cards to have. All right, so I've drawn my cards. Now it's time for the plot progression. And then we've got the grandson. Is this a kissing book? And number four, so I'm going to put this token on the space number four right here. All right. And that is the end of the round. I don't need to discard. I only have four cards in hand. All right, I need to get them together, and they're pretty far apart still. So um, I'm going to move Buttercup back because the, other, the second challenge is getting them both in the barn. So I'm going to go one, two. That gets them pretty close. I'm tempted to... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to use the Courage, and I'm going to move her one more space. So now they're both in the same space at the well. And so if I look at this, this mean, this requirement, they, there must be two or fewer chores. Okay, I've only got two. Wesley and Buttercup must be on the same space. They're both at the well. And then I can discard a love and accomplish this challenge. So I'm going to discard the love, put this on there to show that I've accomplished the As You Wish challenge, and then the reward, draw one card from the special deck. All right, the card says, I hope we win. Choose a player. They draw two cards from the story deck. The quote, don't pester him. He's had a hard day. And so this just becomes part of my deck. And then whenever I use it, um, I would put it into the regular discard pile. So one other interesting feature of this game is not only am I discarding my story cards into this discard, anytime I use a special card, they go into the same discard pile. So my story cards are going to continue to flesh out and become more and more powerful as I move through the sequ uh, sequential chapters, um, which do get harder as we go through. All right, so I have done my storytelling. I've accomplished a challenge. I got my reward, and now it's time for me to draw two cards. And I got another courage, another love. Wow, that's great. And I have five cards, so I'm still okay there. Now it's on to the plot. 17. Grandfather says, you want me to read this or not? <laughs> and then 17 is in this category, fetch me that picture. So we want to move Buttercup to Wesley's space, then draw and resolve another plot card. So they're already on the same space, so nothing to do there, but I do have to draw another plot card. And this is number seven. Grandpa says, keep your shirt on and let me read. And so we're going to put one of these onto space seven. Now at this point, I don't necessarily have to get rid of the chore tokens because this next challenge just requires that they both be in the barn. But if I run out of chore tokens over here in the list, I am going to uh, interrupt the story. <laughs> and so I would have to turn over this and then I would be one loss down basically in this six chapter um, campaign. So um, I, I, I do want to maybe not focus as much on the wood tokens or the chore tokens, but I do want to take care of them to some degree. So my next chapter challenge requires me to get them both in the barn. Uh, so I'm going to work on that in, my, in this next round. So I get my first move, and I'm going to move them uh, to space 11 for the free move. And then I am going to, let's see, I need two loves and a courage. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this, I hope we win. Choose a player. They draw two cards from the story deck. So I'm going to turn that in and get two more cards to see if I can hopefully accomplish uh, even more. So I got my two loves and a courage for this challenge, and I've got another courage here, but I have these two in hand. So I'm going to play these two courage to move them both into the barn. And now that I move them both into the barn, that satisfies that requirement. I have two loves and a courage. I'm going to put those in the discard pile, and the reward is draw one from the special deck. So now I have another one, wild card. This card can be used as any type of story card. That's nice. All right, so I've accomplished two of the challenges. The third challenge, Seek Fortune, says Buttercup must be in the barn, Wesley to the fortune space, on the two fortune space. You must have completed all other challenges. So she's already in the barn. I need to get Wesley down here to the two fortune space. Um, and at that point, I would need to discard two adventures and a courage. And I haven't had any adventure cards since the very first hand, which I, and I already spent them. Uh, although this is a wild, and I've got a courage, so I just need to come up with an adventure card here. Um, so I've done my storytelling. I'm going to draw my two cards. And I got a, oh, great, I got a love and an adventure. The adventure is exactly what I needed. And then it's time to progress the plot. Number 16, 
Grandpa says, I'm explaining to you because you look nervous. <laughs> and this is in the second category, so move them to this, move Buttercup to Wesley's space and resolve another plot card. They're already on the same space, but I go to the next plot card. <laughs> Interesting, this storyline's right in line. Uh, the grandson says, I wasn't nervous. Maybe I was a little bit concerned, but that's not the same thing. That's hilarious. Those turned out side by side. And then I have to put a chore on space 12. So that's a little concerning. I'm down to two over here, and I got to get Wesley a long way. Uh, but let's see what we can do here. So now I go to my next turn. So Wesley can move two spaces. So I'm going to go one, two. And I need cur uh, adventure, adventure, and courage. So I'm going to use. I'm going to think about this wild as my second adventure, which gives me this card. Um, and so uh, I'm going, but I I need two more spaces. Um, I'm just going to use this card to have Buttercup get rid of this chore token. Oh, actually no. Uh, she can't. Wesley's the only one that can get rid of those chore tokens. I may have made a mistake on that earlier, so if I did, keep mind. So I, she can't do that. He has to. Uh, so I'm going to just discard this instead to move him closer. All right. Uh, and then that's my storytelling. I'm not going to play any of these cards because these will help me satisfy this challenge. Uh, so then my storytelling is done. I draw two. I have another adventure and another courage. And then it's plot time. And it's number one. The grandson says, a book? Has it got any sports in it? And it's a number one, so I'm going to put this on the number one space. So I'm down to one. I'm getting close to an interruption. Fortunately, uh, we uh, are almost there. So uh, now it's that turns over. I've still got five cards. I'm not over my limit. And so my next turn, I'm going to move Wesley to the two fortune space. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to discard a card to get rid of one of those chores, even though it's not necessary. Because at this point, Buttercup's in the barn, Wesley's on the two fortune space, and we have completed the other challenges. So if I discard Adventure, Adventure, and Courage, so my Wild is an adventure, the other adventure, and Courage, and you can't take the cards onto the next round, so there was really no advantage for me to save this one and save my Wild. You keep the Wish card, or the Miracle cards, but uh, tiles, but not the cards. So, um, so I'm playing that. That satisfies all of those. I have completed the third challenge, and the reward is you complete this chapter, and we will move on. So at this point, uh, we've satisfied chapter one. We're successful. We even have a miracle token for the next round, and now this is how we transition to the next chapter. So we can just pull our characters off of the board, pull these wood tokens off of the board, because they are just needed in the first challenge. Pull these off and turn the page. And now I'm at the second chapter. Then we need to go ahead and put the cards together. So the special cards that I've earned are in here. And I'm just going to reshuffle those with the rest of the unused story deck. If the story deck ever runs out while you're playing, uh, you just reshuffle it and go again. It's when the plot deck, when this one runs out, then the story gets interrupted and you have to flip the tile to show that you're one loss down in the sequence. Uh, but we would just shuffle these all together. These are just the special ones and they were already shuffled so I didn't need to do anything with them. And then the plot cards, I need to shuffle those up. Um, and then we go on to the rules for the next chapter. And so I'll just get this one set up, but I won't play it through. But I want to see you how e show you how easy it is to set these up um, and how quick it is to transition from chapter to chapter. Now, it does say in the on the book or the uh, book, the game cover, that it's supposed to take about 15 minutes per chapter. I think that's pretty ambitious. Um, I was moving pretty quickly there, and the first chapter is the easiest. So I don't know that that may have been 15 minutes or less. But some of the other ones are a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more challenging. So I'm not sure if you would always be able to finish in 15 minutes per, per chapter. All right, so then I've got everything shuffled and ready to go. I've kept my miracle uh, tile and I come back here. Chapter two, Escape by Sea. Follow the instructions for all the chapters, which was again just shuffling all the decks of cards and getting them set. Place Fezzik, Indigo, and Buttercup on the start space. So I'm going to take Fezzik and put them on the start space, and Buttercup, and Inigo. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. So they're on the start space. Uh, place Vizzini on space two. Put the ship counter on space S. 
and put the M counter, mystery ship counter, on space M on the board on the map track. Place a miracle counter on the miracle space. Read through the rules and challenges for this chapter. Whoever was most recently on a boat goes first. And so the rules and challenges are the rules are here. The challenges are here. I won't read through the challenges, but I will read through the rules because I, I want you to see how it's different for every chapter. And so this is Escape by Sea, the story so far. Buttercup has been abducted, abducted by a trio of strange characters. As they make their escape by sea, a mysterious ship gives chase. The chapter rules. Sailing. In order to move your ship to the next space on the map track, either Fezzik or Inigo must be in the same space as Vizzini, and you must discard a card that matches the icon of the next space on the map track. So uh, we want to be moving our ship along this trail here. And we have to make sure that either Fezzik or Inigo is on the same space as Vizzini in order to do that. Um, and, as, and we have to discard. So here we can discard any card, adventure, revenge, any, courage, intrigue. So you have to really play the movement of the boat very carefully with the cards that you have. Second thing about sailing. If Vizzini is on the prow, which is here, uh, you may discard any three cards in order to sail the ship one space. So if you have an abundance of cards, maybe you use miracle tokens to gain a lot of cards and you know you're going to have to discard them anyway, you might as well discard them during the storytelling phase and move the ship along the progression. You may move your ship any number of times during your turn as long as you're able to discard the appropriate cards. The chapter is interrupted if the mystery ship moves into the space occupied your by your ship. And this mystery ship is going to be chasing you down um, if it ever catches up, which did happen to us the first time we played this challenge, uh, the story gets interrupted, you reset this whole chapter, you flip this over to show that you've lost once, and then you try again. All right, now the plot table is different as well. If you flip over a 1 through 10, move the thing and the other thing. Uh, move Mazzini to the space on the board with the same number, so kind of like in the previous one where we put a chore on the number. Uh, and then as the plot card revealed, move the mystery ship one space along the track. So it's going to be tracking this way one space at a time. If you turn over an 11 through 15, why do you keep looking behind us? Move the mystery ship two spaces on the map track. That's a tough one. If you get a 16 to 18, you are you are sure nobody's following us? <laughs> move the mystery ship two spaces along the map, trap, map track. Move Fezzik and Inigo to the start space. And then 19 or 20, inconceivable. Discard two more plot cards and resolve their effects. That's really rough. You have to do two plot cards, which could make the mystery ship move really fast, and that's what caught us. Uh, we also didn't do a great job of using our cards for the ship. We kept using them to move people too frequently. Um, and what we discovered, a little hint on this, this challenge, uh, you want to use your cards to move the ship and just use your free moves as part of your story, uh, before your storytelling to move the people around. So this one we found quite a bit more challenging than the first one, but uh, still a lot of fun. And it does just make you feel like the story is going on. The challenge is I won't read all the details, but uh, one of them is no more rhymes now. I mean it. Anybody want a peanut? Uh, and then we got the shrieking eels where she has to be in the water by the eels and Fezzik has to pull her out just like in the story. Uh, and whoever he is, he's too late. That's if you make it to the end of the trail here, the end of this map track, which is the Cliffs of Insanity. Uh, you've made it to the Cliffs of Insanity before the mystery ship catches you. You've satisfied the requirements and completed this chapter. So uh, again, uh, second chapter, much, much different. And then if you move on, I'll just briefly show you, won't go into any of the details, but in the next chapter, it's a completely different scenario. Now you're at the Cliffs of Insanity. So you've got a whole different set of rules and a whole different set of challenges. And you're going to have different characters showing up on the board for each chapter. Then we move into the Fire Swamp with its own rules and its own challenges and its own setup in, this, in the instruction manual. And then it'll take a miracle. So we're in the city. We're, I think, uh, yeah, this is where you visit Miracle Max. And uh, that part of the story comes in. Um, and we've got, again, unique features to the story and the challenges. And then finally, we make it to the castle. Have fun storming the castle. Um, and we've got to accomplish the challenges, bunches of challenges here in the castle to finally win the game. And I love just all the way through the different quotes. Let me explain. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. <laughs> Uh, so that is a quick overview. You've seen a partial playthrough and an overview about how the game works. Hopefully that was helpful. Now let me tell you a little bit about my review of this game. What do I think about the Princess Bride Adventure Board Game? So rating the Princess Bride Adventure Board Game is fun for me to just even reflect 
on this story. Uh, my wife and I couldn't quit laughing and smiling the whole time we were playing the game. Um, so that's kind of a spoiler alert for what you're going to hear. But uh, let me break it down into the different six categories. For each category, it's a zero, one, or two. If I rate it a zero, then it just really fell short in that category. If it's a one, it's pretty solid. Um, and if it's a two, it's one of my favorites, or it's one of the best, in my opinion. Um, and so let's start with production. Uh, the production is great. I mean, this is a mass market target type store distribution game. And the book is high quality. Um, the fact that they made the game board a book when the whole movie is about reading a book, just the attention to detail in the production of this, the quotes, uh, the thematic ties, which carries on to the next concept. But uh, the production to this is really great. The miniatures are even pretty good. I mean, they're not as amazing as some miniatures I've seen in other games, but again, for a mass market game, uh, the miniatures are great. The card quality is good. The art's spectacular. Um, yeah, I feel like the production is great for this game. Definitely a two out of two. For theme, it was completely immersive. It, uh, yeah, it had us sucked in from the beginning. Before I even tried the game, I was very interested because this is one of our favorite movies of all time. Um, but my wife and I were laughing and smiling the whole time. Uh, just can't get a smile off your face if you like this movie while you're playing this game and you feel like you're reenacting the different adventures of the story and you're adding your own quotes that you remember that aren't already in the books, uh, in the book and in the cards. Uh, really great theme wise, two out of two for sure. Mechanics and decision making. This one I'm a bit torn. Um, there are pros and cons here. So in terms of the mechanics and decision making, I was, I was very impressed. This is a real game. This is not um, just a, a storybook for kids. There's actually some challenges to it, and it's a good cooperative game. It's on the easier side for cooperative games, um, but so there's a little lacking of depth there, um, but it's like six games because you have six different chapters and they're all different. So the creativity um, and the depth of thinking, even though there's a lot of similarities, you're using the plot cards, using the story cards, but you're trying to accomplish different things um, and maybe this is just new to me because I've not really played very many campaign or legacy games. Uh, I haven't played any legacy games and only a couple of campaign games. So maybe that's just something new for me, but it really stood out to advance or deepen this category. So my first impression was maybe a one because when we went through those first couple chapters, I thought, well, this is a little bit easy um, compared to some other cooperative games. There's not a huge amount of depth in each chapter. But then when I think about the fact that there are six, uh, I feel like if I gave halves, I'd, I'd go one and a half, but I don't do halves. So I'm going to go ahead and give it the two because there's a real game here and it's a lot of fun to not just experience the nostalgia, but to play the game. Uh, I enjoyed it. It's on the lighter side, but if you enjoy lighter side games, this is going to be a great one, or I, I think it could be a great one for you. We really like it. Then as I move on to game flow, uh, the game flow is great because it's cooperative and you don't only move your own character. You can move any characters. And so there's always going to be conversation. Um, I could see how, as a lot of cooperative games, could this could be a problem, is if you have a quarterback type of player who wants to run everything and dictate what happens. Um, but that's not a fault of the game. I don't think that's just something that I think, depending on who you play with, I could see that being a potential issue. Uh, but outside of that, I felt like the game flow was nice. The chapters themselves didn't outstay their welcome. Even when we had to replay a chapter, they're short enough. It didn't feel overbearing. It wasn't like, oh, I've got to play this two-hour game over again. It was, I've got to play this 15, 20 minutes again. Um, and so that was for sure worth it. Um, so I feel like the game flow was nice. There was an arc to the story. The chapters got progressively harder, and, and it followed the storyline of the movie, obviously. So I felt like the game flow was good. I'd give it a two out of two on game flow as well. For replay value, I will give it a knock on replay value because once you've gone through all six chapters, I don't see that, at least for me, I'm going to be pulling it off the shelf frequently for my family. Every once in a while, there's going to be that, hey, let's play Princess Bride again. But I think that's more like once or twice a year. Um, now, the advantage that I see, though, is if I have family or this Thanksgiving, we're going to my brother's house, I'm definitely taking it because my whole extended family loves the movie, too. And I can't wait to play it with them. And my parents are going to be there. And my dad's not really big into games, but he loves The Princess Bride. I think I can make him, not make him, <laughs> I think I can talk him into playing this game. And I think he would really enjoy it. Um, and so extending it out beyond my core family here in my home, um, I think there's more replayability in that side. So I don't think it's quite worth a two. 
but it's definitely not a zero because while it may only get played once or twice just in my own home, if guests come in or if I go somewhere and visit other people, it would definitely be something I'd want to take in and introduce them to. Easy enough to teach them how to play. And if they like the movie, fun and engaging enough and just the nostalgia of it, uh, I think would really warm their hearts and hopefully get them interested in other board games as well, if they're not already. And then for the last one, personal value. Uh, how do I rate this? Is it staying on my shelf? Uh, am I trading it away a zero? Is it staying on my shelf but rarely getting played a one? Or is it you know, one of my favorite games a two? Um, and I think because of the potential I see in this game, I'm going to go ahead and give it the two. It's, it's tricky because I wouldn't say it's in my top 20 games of all time, but I think it's probably in my top 50. And because of the potential I see for introducing a lot of different people to the game, because, you know, who doesn't love The Princess Bride? Almost everybody that's seen it really enjoys it. Um, and if you're into games and you like cooperative games, I think it's going to be a good one. And uh, so that potential to introduce a lot of different people to something that they may really already love, um, I think this is a great opportunity to draw some people into gaming. So for me, I'm going to value it as a two, um, even with that replayability issue that I mentioned. So production's a two, themes a two, mechanics and, dis and uh, decision making was a close, but gave it a two, game flow a two, replay a one, but that's uh, with my personal value being a two, that gives an overall score of 11, uh, which is a fabulous score. And for me, this is a fabulous game. I can see some people will say, oh, I'm not going to get this off the shelf very much. And I could see some people say, you know, I played it once. That's good. Or maybe they're just not into the Princess Bride theme. Uh, but I think if you like co-ops, if you like the Princess Bride movie, you're probably going to really enjoy this game. So that is my conclusion and my review of the Princess Bride Adventure book game. Hopefully it was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. If you did, please click on that like button down below. Um, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the channel and follow along with what we're doing here at Bill Indiana. And if you want to get notifications, click on that bell icon and it'll tell you when we have other videos coming out. If you have comments, questions, something you want to mention about the movie, uh, or maybe you've played this board game, or um, yeah, maybe a mistake I made in the playthrough, leave those comments below. I'd love to hear from you. So as always, thanks for watching. This is Bill Indiana, signing off. Huh.